Okay, so the, the uh, topic that, that I choose is that uh, a student roadmap under RA 9266. Saan ba uh, nagsimula ang uh, pagiging uh, ambisyon natin? No? Yung, yung ambisyon natin na pumasok sa larangan ng uh, arkitektura. Okay, and uh, paano tayo pupunta doon sa goal na later on is tayo ay magiging registered and licensed uh, architect. So to begin with, ang ating uh, RA 9266 or the Architecture Act of 2004 uh, has a five articles and uh, mayroong uh, 47 section no, sa mga may mga professional practice na subject. Pag uh, napapansin nito, ninyo yung ating batas, lima lang ang uh, artikulo na nandyan. Pero merong mga sari-sariling sections na nagdi-divide doon sa mga topics with regards to the practice of architecture. Bago na yan, no? in uh, 2004, nagkaroon na ng amendments ang uh, ating architecture law. Ang original na architecture law natin is uh, Republic Act 545. And uh, that uh, Republic Act 545, nirepeal siya ng 2004, kaya nagkaroon tayo ng Republic Act 92. 66. So, bago na ang naabutan ninyo And uh, kami, ang naabutan namin is RA545 Pag tinignan ninyo yung aming certificate of registration as architect Yung aming uh, license, no authority to practice Ang nakalagay doon, we were vested an authority under sa Republic Act 545 While kayo, pag pumasa kayo later on and magiging arkitekto kayo Ang mababasa nyo doon sa inyong certificate of registration is you were vested an authority to practice a profession under RA 9266. Okay? So, yun yung pagkakaiba lang natin doon. And then, uh, signed into law by uh, the uh, former President uh, Joseph Ejercito Estrada. Now, on these five articles that we will be uh, discussing today, doon lang tayo sa Article 3. No? So, mag-focus tayo doon sa Article 3 Sa examination, registration, and licensure So, matatouch lang natin yung topic more or less Under Article 4 on Sections uh, Section 25 And Sections uh, 34 So, yun lang ang uh, dadaanan nating uh, discussion doon Okay? So, i-discuss lang natin Sandali, kung uh, saan ba nagsimula ang uh, ating practice of uh, architecture or ano yung bumuo doon sa Republic Act 9266 para maintindihan lang natin okay so ang ating batas ay nanggaling sa 1987 constitution okay kasi kung wala yung 1987 constitution walang legislative department walang uh, executive department walang uh, gumawa or nagre-repeal ng ating uh, batas okay and sa practice of profession Ang uh, saliging batas pa rin ang nagsasabi na uh, the practice of the profession sa Pilipinas is limited only to Filipino citizen, save in cases provided by law. The next one is uh, RA 8981. Previously, itong RA 8981 or the PRC Modernization Act of 2000, previously ito ay Presidential Decree 233 or 223. Okay? And then, uh, noong 2000, nagkaroon din ng uh, amendment into RA8981. Ang pinaka-main goal and focus nito kung bakit nagkaroon ng repeal sa PD223 is that uh, it focuses now on the computerization of uh, the uh, licensure examination. And uh, well, ngayon, uh, pinag-iisipan na rin ng PRC na magkakaroon ng uh, virtual uh, exam or online uh, exam no? because sa uh, it is uh, also in compliance with this uh, mandate of RA 8981. So nagkataon nitong pandemic na majority ngayon is uh, naka-work from home, no? And uh, yung mga review ngayon is uh, yung mga lectures is more on uh, virtual uh, learning. So it's an opportunity na rin ng uh, Professional Regulation Commission na mapadali, no? Instead na pino-program nila paunti-unti kung uh, 
kailan magkakaroon ng uh, mga online examination. Ngayon, uh, medyo nagpapadali because of this pandemic dahil yun yung need. No? So, magiging compliance na sila doon sa RA 89-81. And then, uh, as what I said a while ago, uh, the old architecture law is uh, 545. Kasi kung walang RA 545, wala itong RA 92-66. Kasi repeal lang siya ng uh, old architecture law. No? Hindi siya yung talagang uh, main foundation ng pagtatag ng ating uh, profession. Ang uh, pinaka-old law natin is RA 545. And then we have the auto professionals. Kasi pag pumasa kayo at magiging arkitekto kayo later on, manunumpa muna kayo. No? Uh, hindi, kayo mag, hindi kayo pwedeng mag-practice ng profession natin baka hindi muna kayo manunumpa ng panunumpa ng isang professional. And then once na pumasa tayo, uh, we will be governed now by our architects, uh, architects Code of Ethics and Ethical Conduct. And then we have PRC Resolutions, PR BOA Resolutions. Yung PR BOA is Professional Regulatory Board. No? Sila yung nabibigay ng uh, mga examinations natin. And then we have the Civil Code of the Philippines dahil ang liability natin once later on mag-sign and sealed ka ng uh, yung gawa ay uh, governed ka na ng Civil Code of the Philippines in terms of liability under Article uh, 1723 ng ating uh, Civil Code. 15 years ang ating liability once we sign and sealed architectural and structural uh, documents now with other allied professionals. And then we have the local government code. Go govern tayo ng local uh, government code is because yung PTR natin is mandated by the local government code. Hindi naman yan sa RA 9266. And uh, we cannot uh, uh, practice our profession in uh, in India uh, country without that uh, professional uh, tax na binabayaran natin every January sa ating uh, local government units. And then uh, we have the uh, Corporation Code of the Philippines no? and uh, its issuances dahil may mga architects na nagre-register as uh, corporation partnerships. No? So governed yan ng uh, Corporation Code of the Philippines. And then the writing of scholars and authors and then uh, the Supreme Court jurisprudence and other borrowed legislation. So, yun yung pinanggalingan ng ating uh, practice no, or yung, yung uh, paggawa ng ating uh, batas para magkaroon tayo ng uh, law in the practice of architecture profession. So, we go now with section 14, paragraph uh, or number 2 of uh, article 12 no, ng, ng ating 1987 constitution yung na-mention ko kanina na ang practice ng profession sa Pilipinas is limited only to Filipino uh, citizens. Pero may dugtong. No? Ang nakalagay is save in cases provided by law. So itong save in cases provided by law, ito yung sinasabing reciprocity na kung pwede kang mag-practice o, o yung ibang uh, professional sa ibang bansa ay uh, gusto mag-practice dito sa Pilipinas, kailangan allowed muna tayo mag-practice doon sa kanilang bansa para tanggapin natin silang pwedeng mag-practice din ng uh, profession ng uh, arkitektura dito sa bansang uh, Pilipinas. Pagka walang reciprocity agreement or walang reciprocal uh, agreement between two countries, hindi pwedeng mag-practice ang uh, mga foreigners dito sa ating uh, bansa and uh, kailangan nila muna mag-exam uh, or mag-aral ng uh, architecture dito sa Pilipinas bago sila mag-practice. Pero pagka may uh, reciprocity, then uh, both uh, countries, their uh, professionals can practice our profession. No? So, let's go with your uh, your uh, entry no? sa practice of the profession. Ang inyong uh, pinasok na profession, yung uh, profession ng arkitekto is uh, Napaka-demanding sa oras no? uh, Siguro naman uh, Nakikita naman ninyo uh, Pagka nagbigay ang mga professors natin Ng mga plates, sabay-sabay din no? With other subjects, di ba? And uh, Hindi tayo natutulog sa paggawa ng plates And uh, natutulog na naman tayo sa klase no? <laughs> Okay? So dahil uh, puyat no? Napaka-demanding ng oras Na hinihingi ng uh, Ating uh, profession so it will take time for you to make your plates, uh, research, no, and uh, other things with regards to the uh, uh, architectural uh, formation. Okay, so 
kaya nagkakaroon ng mga plates dahil uh, later on yun yung magiging tools natin when we practice our profession when we, when we become an architect ibig sabihin we were already formed inside the institution we formed within uh, our uh, academic institution on what to do no when uh, you later on uh, practice when you pass the board no so yon and then uh may don qualifications na nare require under RA 9266 for you to become a uh, registered and licensed architect no so yung nare require sa atin is that uh, kailangan para ikaw ay magiging arkitekto ikaw ay Filipino citizen or a citizen of a foreign country which is uh, the one i discussed a while ago and then the, the next one is uh, you must have a good moral character so kung wala kang good moral character hindi ka pwedeng magiging arkitekto later on no? so yung good moral character na yan ano uh, may mga may mga kaso ka no na na convict no? so it affects your uh, good moral character magkakaiba ito sa tinatawag dating reputation ang uh, reputation natin is uh, what the society uh, lokonas okay itong uh, good moral character naman is ito yung sa personality natin no So ngayon, in uh, letter C, dito tayo naka-focus That uh, you must be a holder of a degree of Bachelor of Science in Architecture Conferred and uh, recognized by uh, the Commission on Higher Education And uh, in addition to that, uh, kailangan mayroon kang 2 years of diversified training or apprenticeship Bago ka makakuha ng licensure examination. So ito yung roadmap ninyo being a student now. Yung roadmap ninyo ngayon is you have to complete first the uh, five year ladder type curriculum. And then in addition to that, meron pa tayong dalawang taon na diversified training or apprenticeship before we can uh, apply for the licensure examination. So all in all, ang ating uh, formation sa career natin as uh, architect later on nagtatali uh, yon sa 7 years no? so parang medyo uh, iba yung dating natin dahil mas mahaba ang ating uh, pag-aaral compare sa other professionals no? na uh, they are only 4 year course they are only 5 year course but in architecture our formation in the academic institution is 5 years pero may dagdag tayo na dalawang taon sa labas ng institution bago tayo makakuha ng licensure exam and mabigyan ng lisensya sa pag-practice ng architecture profession. So, yun yung uniqueness natin uh, compare doon sa other uh, professionals like uh, engineering no, dahil wala silang apprenticeship uh, after their uh, graduation. So, yun. Doon yung formation natin. And in that formation sa academic institution, ano ba ang mga subjects na kailangan nating Uh, pag-aralan na makomplete uh, before we can uh, uh, have our diversified training so under section 14 ng uh, RA 9266 doon natin makikita yung mga subjects natin yung inaaral natin ngayon which is uh, nandun yung history and theory of architecture so mandate, uh, mandated ng uh, batas natin ang mga subjects na ito no? so history and theory of architecture and ang uniqueness naman natin sa ibang uh, professionals is that they are only studying history of the Philippines no yung Philippine history pero sa atin history and theory of architecture pag tiningnan natin di ba napakalawak ng uh, subject matter ng history and theory of uh, architecture kasi ang history of architecture natin is it uh, covers uh, around the globe no na pinag-aaralan natin yung mga character ng uh, mga uh, structures sa iba't ibang bansa no in fact uh, even uh, the evolution of man di ba uh, inaaral pa natin and then uh, yung mga theory no and uh, the architects of that uh, uh, buildings inaaral natin yon where sa other professionals hindi nila uh, naaral so pag tinitingnan natin talagang unique na unique no yung uh, profession ng ating uh, uh, yung profession natin pinili dahil talagang uh, ibang iba sa ibang uh, professional dahil wala sa kanila to tayo lang ang mayroong uh, pag-aaral sa history of architecture that covers around the globe 
And then we, uh, we have the principles of planning and the architectural practice. So, uh, planning natin is uh, nandyan yung ating mga uh, site uh, planning natin, no? yung mga uh, tropical planning natin, and then uh, yung mga uh, principles niya under national uh, building code, inaaral ng uh, mga arkitekto yung which is hindi rin inaaral ng mga ibang uh, professionals. No? Uh, in fact, uh, yung uh, Rule 7 and 8 natin sa National Building Code, yun yung principles of planning natin no? sa mga city planning natin sa uh, LGUs. No? Pag dinanatan yung Rule 7 ng National Building Code, uh, it speaks about general classification of occupancy no? na doon yung pag-aaral kung paano natin i-arrange ang uh, development ng uh, ating uh, urban society. Okay? And then uh, Rule 8, uh, belongs to development control on how to uh, uh, control the light and view, the building height limits, no, the provision of uh, setbacks, no, for for process of uh, safety, for for process of uh, ventilation and natural light. And then, uh, well, uh, architectural practice. Uh, this uh, RA ninety two sixty six is part of architectural practice. Natin. Uh, conditions of uh, contracts, the uh, management organization, uh, it belongs to professional practice. So, yun yung mga inaaral natin in our formation. And then we have uh, structural design. Although, meron pang structural design na subject, but uh, under our law, wala nang structural design sa practice natin because it was already changed into structural conceptualization. So, wala na tayong, uh, hindi na tayo nagko-compute ng mga sizes ng bars, no, hindi na tayo gumagawa ng uh, structural design analysis uh, Purely, uh, structural conceptualization na lang tayo Kung ano yung, yung uh, itsura ng uh, structural element and Then we have the study of building materials And uh, architectural uh, specifications Dahil need later on no? Pagka gumawa tayo ng uh, mga designs We do at the same time a written uh, specifications Rather than a mechanical or graphical uh, representation and then uh, we have the uh, methods of constructions and utility so inaaral natin ito hindi ito inaaral ng ibang professionals no ng mga uh, iba diyan na gusto mag-practice ng architecture pero wala sila ng mga ganitong formation sa academic institution and then we have urban design and uh, architectural interiors and architectural design and site uh, planning so more or less yun yung major uh, subject na kailangan ninyong uh, tapusin sa inyong uh, uh, formation sa institution from first year up to uh, fifth year na uh, doon na yung test ng ating ability sa, sa thesis natin. No? Uh, in your thesis kasi you are testing of your ability kung pwede na kayong pakawalan sa uh, apprenticeship. No? Kung uh, pwede nang uh, uh, or kumpleto na yung yung uh, principles na inaral sa loob ng uh, academic uh, institution. So yun yung formation natin sa ating uh, piniling profession patungo doon sa magiging lisensyadong uh, arkitekto tayo. So doon tayo naka-focus. Now, uh discuss lang natin itong isang qualification ninyo na uh, kung uh, kayo ay magiging arkitekto, ang isang qualification is mayroong qualification ng a citizen of a foreign country qualified to take the examination. Kasi ang punta nyo later on, once you graduated, once you complete your diversified training, ay yung uh, licensure examination. Okay? Ngayon, sa requirements kasi natin, sa letter A, kailangan Filipino citizen Dahil yun ang sinasabi ng ating saligang batas. Pero, may dugtong na asit is in a foreign country qualified to take the examination. So, ang tanong ngayon is, Sir, pwede bang kumuha ng exam ang uh, foreign or foreign national na hindi naman nag-aaral sa Pilipinas? The answer is yes. Okay? As long na ma-certify ng uh, Commission on Higher Education yung mga subjects niya na nakuha sa ibang bansa, na pareho yung uh, descriptive title sa ating uh, mga subjects dito allowed kumuha ng isang yon. One example is that si uh, architect Ed Calma. 
Si Architect Ed Calma ay hindi naman nag-aral ng architecture dito sa Pilipinas. Nag-aral siya ng architecture sa US. Pero, nakakuha siya ng licensure exam dito sa Pilipinas at na-allow ng PRC. And ngayon is arkitekto siya. Okay? So, in fact, kasama namin yon sa Philippine Institute of Architects. So, another example, itong uh, a citizen of a foreign country qualified to take the examination is the case of Yasuyuki Ota uh, versus uh, Professional uh, Regulation Commission. So, i-discuss natin yung case ni Yasuyuki Ota and then we will go with the diversified training. So, ano itong case ni Yasuyuki Ota? Si Yasuyuki Ota is a Japanese national. Uh, nag, uh, tumira sa Pilipinas And then uh, for more than 10 years na nasa Pilipinas siya Nag-aral siya ng uh, medisina sa uh, Bicol Christian uh, College uh, So nag-aral, nakatapos And then uh, nag-apply for licensure exam Nag-apply sa PRC ng uh, board examination And uh, nung mag-apply sa PRC for board examination, pinayagan, pumasa. Ngayon, nung pumasa itong si Yasuyuki Ota, nag-apply for uh, registration ng uh, practice of profession. Doon ngayon hinarang itong PRC. No, itong case na ito is 2008 na desisyonan ng uh, Supreme Court. Hinarang ng PRC, ang sinabi ng PRC, nung mag-apply for registration, sabi niya, hindi ka pwedeng mag-practice ng profession sa Pilipinas dahil walang uh, reciprocity agreement ang Pilipinas sa Japan na pwedeng mag-practice ang mga Filipino national doon. Okay? So, umabot ito sa Supreme Court dahil ang issue dito is uh, meron bang reciprocity ang uh, Japan and Pilipinas and uh, pwede bang payagan si Yasuyuki Ota sa pag-practice ng uh, medisina dito sa Pilipinas na no, considering na yung uh, allegations ng uh, PRC ay walang uh, reciprocity agreement ang Pilipinas at ang Japan. So ang sabi ng Supreme Court dito, si Yasuyuki Ota is allowed to practice medicine in the Philippines kasi ang sabi ng Supreme Court, nowhere sa batas ng uh, medisina natin na nakalagay that the foreign applicant must show that the conditions of practice of medicine in said country are practicable and attainable by Filipinos. It is enough, sabi ng Supreme Court, it is enough that the laws in a foreign country permit a Filipino to get a license and practice therein. Thus, since OTA has all the qualifications and none of the uh, disqualifications, he can practice medicine in the Philippines. So, sabi ng Supreme Court, hindi kailangan mayroong papel na pinarmahan ng dalawang bansa para magkaroon ng sinasabi nating reciprocity agreement. Sabi ng Supreme Court, enough na na ang mga Filipino is uh, hindi pinoprohibit na kumuha ng lisensya sa Japan na nag-practice doon, pag kaya na yung nangyari, pwede rin silang mag-practice at the same time sa Pilipinas. So, ito si Yasuyoko Ota, nabigyan ng uh, lisensya sa pag-practice ng medicine dito sa Pilipinas. So, it's a good case dito sa, sa sa example ng a citizen of a foreign country qualified to take the examination. So pwede, no kaya nga di ba yung mga uh, ibang uh, lahi no dito ngayon nag-aaral ng mga dentistry, no yung mga Iranian, no dito nag-aaral ng dentistry. Later on pagka nag-graduate dito, pwedeng mag-take ng board exam. No? Ang problema natin later on diyan is uh, baka mamaya uh, sila na yung uh, magmamanipulate ng practice of profession dito sa Pilipinas. Okay? So, we go now with the diversified training. Pagka kayo ay na-form na sa academic institution, natapos na yung lahat ng subjects, you pass all the qualifications, no? and uh, you graduated, ito na ngayon ang papasukin ninyo, ang diversified training program. Ibig sabihin, Itong diversified training program, ito yung student practice role. Wala tayong uh, programa na paglabas mo ng institution ay pwede ka na mag-private practice na katulad ng isang arkitekto. Hindi pa. Okay, hangga't wala kang lisensya, hangga't wala kang uh, PRC license na sinasabi yung ating certificate of registration, pumasa ka sa board exam, nagkapag-take ka ng oath, hindi ka talaga pwedeng mag-transact uh, ng uh, business 
na katulad ng isang arkitekto. So, hindi ka pwedeng mag-private practice. No? Sasabihin mo, magdi-design ka ng bahay, magdi-design ka ng kung ano-anong gusali and papipermahan mo lang sa architect or uh, civil engineer. That is not allowed. No? Hindi yan uh, pwede sa atin. You are considering an illegal practitioner pag ginawa mo yon, and yung nag-sign and seal kung architect yan is engaged in the malpractice of the profession. So, pag-graduate ninyo, ang inyong uh, tatahaking landas ay ang next step is the two years diversified training. So, ito yung sinasabi natin na five years plus two year uh, apprenticeship. Okay? So, in that uh, two years apprenticeship or equivalent to 3,840 hours, ito yung mga opportunities na pwedeng uh, makapag-participate ang uh, mga trainee katulad ninyo no? kung uh, graduating kayo ngayon and then later on uh, by next year. Uh, magiging uh, diversified trainee na kayo Ito dapat ang inyong uh, possible uh, involvement no? Pagka pumasok kayo sa isang uh, architectural firm Para mag-diversified trainee no? So ano yung uh, magiging involvement ninyo? Dapat ma-involve kayo ng mga mentor ninyo Sa mga meetings with clients Including discussions of uh, the brief of the uh, project and uh, the project drawings And then, uh, ma-involve kayo sa mga preliminary site investigations, meeting with local uh, authorities and uh, officials. And then, uh, ma-involve kayo sa preparation of design and production of drawings, specifications, and schedules. Meeting with contractors, uh, quantity surveyors, surveyors, uh, structural engineers, mechanical engineers, sanitary engineers, and other consultants. So, dapat uh, malaman nyo yon para pag kayo ay pumasana at uh, magiging arkitekto kayo. Uh, smooth na dapat ang inyong uh, practice dahil alam nyo na yung mga uh, processes na ginagawa sa isang uh, architectural firm. And then, uh, pre-contract uh, job management, yung pagpasabon, uh, contract procedures, uh, paggawa ng mga correspondence and uh, reports, mga quality controls, inspection reports, dapat natutunan nyo yon sa inyong uh, mentor sa pagiging involved ninyo sa uh, mga discussions. No? And then, uh, site visits no? and uh, meetings with the members of the construction industry, uh, post-completion uh, procedures, uh, defects liability inspections, and the office procedures and organization. So, kaya kayo nilalagay sa diversified training para malaman yung lahat na to. Para pag kayo naging arkitekto, alam nyo na kung paano nyo iporma ang inyong opisina, alam nyo na kung paano ninyo ipoporma ang inyong practice, alam nyo na kung anong gagawin pagka kayo ay may sarili ng kliyente, yung hindi na kayo magtatanong ano bang gagawin ko. No? Nakakalungkot man isipin, uh, maraming mga institution ngayon that uh, their uh, method of instruction is towards uh, passing only the licensure examination and not uh, training the uh, students and uh, the aspirants in the profession uh, dealing or uh, going to that uh, practice of profession. So, may pagkakaiba kasi ang uh, learning pagka it is towards passing the licensure, licensure exam and towards uh, training them on how to do the job when they become an architect. Okay? So, yon. So, ito yung pinaka-important reminders with the mentors at the same time with the mentee no yung mentee kayo yon yung uh, apprentice okay under our uh, apprenticeship program pag nag-apprentice kayo later on 50% lang diyan sa apprenticeship ninyo ang mga CAD works the remaining 50% uh, na distribute yan sa preparation of contract preparation of bid documents preparation of bills of materials, preparations of bills of quantities, and then uh, general conditions. And then 10% of that is uh, for technical and financial uh, feasibility studies and promotional services. 15% for field works, project management, construction management, and administration. So, yun yung uh, paghati ng oras doon sa apprenticeship. Kasi marami akong uh, nakikita na yung isang apprentice sa isang, uh, lalo na yung mga contractor, Uh, minsan uh, iba site inspector lang ang trabaho for the uh, whole two years no meron namang ibang uh, trabaho nila sa loob ng dalawang taon is CAD works lang hindi na nila nadaanan yung iba't ibang field of expertise or field of uh, practice which under our uh, diversified training or apprenticeship dapat 
nakahati yung mga oras or percentage ng uh, mga oras na nilalaan doon sa mga field of practice na yon. So, hindi lang dapat nakaupo lang sa lamesa ng uh, loob ng opisina ang mga apprentice. No? Nakahati dapat yun. Hindi yung nagkakad works lang kayo, hindi yung nagre-rendering works na kayo. Okay? Kasi ang rendering works ninyo, yung mga CAD works ninyo, sa eskulahan uh, ginagawa nyo na yan. No? Alam nyo nang gawin yan. And uh, kailangan na lang yan uh, ipupulido no? pagdating doon sa iyong uh, apprenticeship. No? Kung baga, uh, i-realign na lang yan sa apprenticeship na itong tinuturo sa eskulahan. But on the uh, actual Uh, scenario sa apprenticeship ito dapat ang uh, ginagawa lang okay so 50% only belongs to drafting works 50% of that belongs to the uh, construction supervision uh, preparation of uh, documents okay kasi hindi yan napapansin masyado ngayon ang uh, karamihan is ginagawa nilang CAD operators ang mga graduates okay so kung makikita natin sa ating apprenticeship logbook Ito yung makikita doon sa field of practice. Nakahati yan sa anim. And nakalagay ang percentage na maximum na ikukumplay ng isang uh, graduate of architecture na uh, magkakaroon ng uh, training sa isang mentor. And uh, meron siya equivalent na uh, minimum credit hours. Take note, ah, ang nakalagay dyan is minimum credit hours. Hindi ka dapat bababa sa credit hours na yan. Di baling uh, lumagpas ang oras mo. Basta hindi ka bababa sa number of hours uh, required Ang sinasabi naman ng ating uh, batas Is that equivalent to 2 years no? It does not say there na naka-fix ng 2 years Ang diversified training Ibig sabihin, kahit umabot ka na ng 2 uh, years Sa iyong diversified training Kung nakikita mo pa naman sa sarili mo Na parang hindi ka pa ready no? Mag-practice ng profession Huwag kang magmadali kumuha ng uh, board examination no? Kasi ang mentality ng karamihan is that Pag uh, nag-2 years ka na, yun na, kukuha na ng logbook, no, magbibili na ng logbook, and then mag-fill up na. No, and uh, sa totoo lang, dinadaya ang pag-fill up ng logbook. Kasi karamihan, hindi talaga na-cover ang uh, field of practice na nakalagay sa uh, logbook. No, marami talagang uh, nagdadaya dyan. Hindi lang ganun kahigpit siguro mag-check no, ang uh, PRC. No, pagdating dyan sa logbook But you know guys uh, Mayroong consequences no? Kasi ang, ang question dyan is uh, Talaga bang Nasusunod no? At hindi ba dinadaya ang logbook O baka mamaya dinadaya At nagkakaroon ng miss uh, representation no? Ano ba ang effect And ano ba ang consequence Pagka dinaya ang logbook Take note no? kung mayroon tayong mga mentors Na nakikinig ngayon And uh, well, sa inyo mga students para alam nyo kung ano yung consequences niyan Ang uh, first page ng uh, ating logbook, mayroon niyan affidavit no? And yung affidavit na yan, nakalagay dyan no? Alimbawa, I, no, architect uh, Lia QC of legal age With the uh, residence address at Baguio City uh, After being duly sworn upon uh, my oath the post and state that I am a practicing architect with certificate number, etc. And then, uh, pursue 1 to section 13, uh, paragraph C, article 3 of RA 9266, and in accordance with the requirements prescribed in the logbook of diversified experience in architecture, records of my office show that Mr. Juan de la Cruz has undergone diversified training under my mentorship and supervision. So, nangangako ka dyan na kumpleto ka sa record na nag-apprentice sa akin itong batang to no? and naka-attach dyan sa number 3 pag binasa natin, naka-attach ang uh, diversified training form 002, duly accomplished mark as Annex, Annex A and made an integral part thereof and that I am willing to appear before the board of architecture, the PRC or is duly authorized representative and present satisfactory evidence of the trainee's diversified training in my office and the diversified experience the trainee has acquired if, when, and acquired. E paano pag hiningan ka ng dokumento at wala kang ma-present later on? Uh, logbook lang ang ma-present mo but personal record ng office mo hindi mo naman nare-record ang, uh, ang activities ng bata. So, pwede kang makasuhan ngayon ng Uh, false misrepresentation no? In fact, uh, ang ating logbook Ay nakanotarize 
no? Pag nakita nito yung pinaka last paragraph, di ba? In truth of all the foregoing, no? sa lahat na nakasulat diyan ay makatutuhanan, sabi mo doon, and subscribe to before me sa, sa isang uh, notaryo publiko, no? sa isang abogado. Pinanotarize mo nagiging public instrument dahil papasok ito sa PRC, magiging public document. And later on, pag na-discover yan na may nagreklamo, for example, mag magkakaroon ka ng uh, prone to charge of the crime of perjury. No? So, yun ang magiging consequence mo. Pwede kang kasuhan ng uh, perjury or uh, false uh, testimony in other cases uh, and perjury in solemn affirmation under Article 183 of the Revised uh, Penal Code. Okay? So, yun yung consequence. Pagka dinaya ng uh, mentor and dinaya rin ng uh, apprentice ang kanilang logbook. So, hindi biro, no? Baka hindi lang naiintindihan ng iba. And may kulong yan, no? May kulong ito and uh, fine and penalties. Okay? So, yon. And uh, karamihan, ito yung uh, common question sa akin, no? Uh, how does architectural diversified intern trainee be compensated? No? Palagi tanong sa akin, sir, may bayad ba ang uh, apprenticeship? No? Kasi sinasabi ng karamihan, ang apprenticeship ay walang bayad. No? Training yan Libre Okay But ano ba ang sinasabi ng labor code? Okay Kasi wala ito sa 9266 Okay Sinasabi sa ating labor code Na pagka ikaw ay nag-apprentice Ang kontrata dapat na pinipirmahan Ng isang empleyado O isang apprentice Sa kanyang mentor Ay apprenticeship agreement Okay Hindi regular employment Kasi magkakaiba yung uh, uh, Duties and responsibilities Ng mentor Sa kanyang Uh, apprentice Pagka regular employment Being a boss And iba rin yung duties and responsibilities ng mentor Sa kanyang apprentice Pagka apprenticeship agreement Okay? Yung uh, una Pagka regular employment yan uh, Ina-expect mo na na alam na ng bata ang gagawin niya And uutusan mo na lang kung anong gagawin niya Dahil pinagsasahod mo While in the apprenticeship agreement Ang role ng mentor dyan is Iti-train mo yung bata kung anong gagawin niya Para later on, alam niya na Pagka nag-practice na siya Na ito pala ang dapat gawin ng isang arkitekto At, sya, at ng kanyang firm Okay? So, pag sinertify natin actually yung logbook Na ang employment ng bata is regular employment And not a process of agreement Dapat nga, void no? Kaya lang, hindi ganon kahigpit Ang ating uh, professional uh, regulation commission Sa pag-monitor nito mga apprenticeship program So pagdating uh, doon sa ating uh, compensation, ang sinasabi ng labor code na the general rule is that the wage rate provided for in this apprenticeship agreement or learnership is 75% of the minimum wage, wage of that of a regular employment. So dapat may bayad ang apprenticeship agreement ng 75% of the regular wage ng regular na Empleyado. So, yun ang sinasabi ng ating labor code. Pero, mayroong exemption. Okay? That is the general rule. Anong sinasabi ng exemption? Sabi doon sa exemption, sa Article 72 ng uh, ating uh, PD442, no, no, ng ating uh, Labor Code of the Philippines, the Secretary of Labor and Employment may authorize the hiring of apprentices without compensation whose training on the job is required by the school or training program curriculum or as a requisite for graduation or board examination. So, pwedeng walang bayad pagka ang purpose ng apprenticeship is para sa board examination. Pero take note, ang sinasabi ng labor code, there should be an authority to be granted by the Secretary of Labor and Employment. So, pagka hindi mo yan pina-approve sa dole, babayaran mo ang apprenticeship ng 75% ng minimum wage ng regular employee. Pero pagka may uh, approval or uh, authority from the DOLE secretary, then doon ngayon, pwedeng hindi mo bayaran ng uh, compensation ang iyong apprentice. So, pwede na mga allowance-allowance. No? So, yun. Kasi siyempre, malayo rin minsan ang uh, gagalingan ng ating mga apprentice. So, yun ang sinasabi ng ating labor code pagdating sa apprenticeship. Now we go with the uh, architectural diversified training obtained abroad. Halimbawa, hindi ka nag uh, nag uh, training dito sa Pilipinas. Nagpunta ka ng abroad. Valid ba ang iyong uh, diversified training? So, 
ang ating uh, board examination abroad is uh, governed by uh, Executive Order 835. Oh, nung uh, time ni Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, nagkaroon ng uh, Executive Order si Madam na mag-conduct ng licensure examination uh, abroad. Okay? Pero ako nga, ang opinion ko rito is that uh, uh, debatable. No? Debatable itong uh, Executive Order. Kasi ang order, although the one that will function is uh, a government officials but the implementation is to be implemented abroad no hindi dito sa Pilipinas ang tanong kasi dito is can that implement can that the executive order valid to be implemented abroad no sinasabi kong debatable hindi ko sinasabing invalid ito no sinasabi ko lang if someone later on or somebody will file a case to uh, declare this uh, null and void pwedeng uh, pagbigyan ng uh, korte no na magprosper ang uh, kaso no dahil uh, yun nga ang implementation is uh, sa abroad okay so yun ang uh, reason kung bakit mayroon to yung SPLBE special board licensure examination sa uh, abroad ngayon with regards sa apprenticeship uh, sinasabi kasi natin di ba under the labor code apprenticeship agreement dapat ang kontrata ng isang apprentice pagka regular employment is hindi dapat pwedeng i-consider as uh, apprenticeship dahil nga magkakaiba yung role. Ito naman ang uh, mga nag uh, apprentice abroad. Ang uh, punta talaga nila doon is employment, hindi naman apprenticeship. No? So pag tiningnan nga natin, 'di ba, parang unfair with uh, those students or those graduates na nasa Pilipinas na nagkakandara pang mag-apprentice na walang bayad, walang sahod. While those uh, working abroad na hindi naman apprentice ang punta dito doon, kumikita ng malaki, and uh, nabibigyan ng the same uh, uh, approval na makapag-take ng uh, licensure uh, exam. No? So, pag titignan natin, if we will adapt the logbook uh, abroad, parang invalid na magiging adoption ng logbook abroad. Dahil, una-una, ang arkitekto sa abroad, ay walang power and authority to practice the profession. Ang, ang pirma niya doon, walang power dahil wala siya sa Pilipinas. No? Uh, wala siya sa kanyang uh, uh, jurisdiction para mag-sign and seal ng logbook. Halimbawa, considering uh, tatanggapin natin yung perma, pero ang notaryo naman, hindi naman pwede no? unless doon ang notaryo sa uh, Philippine Embassy. Pag dito sa Pilipinas ang notaryo, pagdating doon, invalid din kasi kailangan may personal appearance with di uh, notary public. No? So, isa 'yon sa mga sinasabi nating debatable then, no, under uh, the law. Okay? And uh, well, in 2017, itong uh, PRC naglabas ng uh, guidelines and uh, ni-relax nila yung guidelines ng submission ng logbook sa Middle East. Ang ni-require lang nila ng uh, requirements doon sa Middle East is a certificate of related work experience, walang logbook. So, 'di ba? Pag tiningnan natin Uh, di ba parang unfair with uh, those uh, graduates na nasa Pilipinas compare sa kanila malaki na ngayon kinikita maliit yung nasa Pilipinas pero nirelax pa yung logbook doon dito naglalagbook sa Pilipinas so yun ang sinasabi kong debatable kasi ang magiging effect yun uh, later on is that magkakaroon ng violation of equal protection clause under the constitution so uh, sinasabi kasi sa constitution natin that No person or class of person shall be deprived of the same protection of the laws which is enjoyed by other person or other classes in the same place and like circumstances. So, kayo mga graduates, you have like circumstances kasi isa lang naman ang objective and purpose of that diversified training is for you to take the licensure examination. So, dapat pare-pareho ang treatment ng nasa abroad and dito. So, magkakaroon ng violation of equal protection laws. Kaya lang, Nobody questions it. So hanggat hindi ma-declare ng court as null and void, ibig sabihin, valid siya. Okay? So halimbawa na lang, uh, na-declare as invalid ang uh, executive order and uh, yung resolutions ng PRC, what will happen doon sa mga pumasa? Hindi na, hindi na ba sila arkitekto? Alam mo, nakapasa na sila, nag-take ng oath na sila, arkitekto na sila. Ngayon na-declare ng void, e doon sila, Uh, nakakuha ng exam because of that executive order and uh, uh, PRC resolutions sa requirements ng logbook 
pag na-declare ba na null and void ang mga executive orders and resolutions na yon, madideclare din null and void ang pagiging arkitekto na. The answer is no. Okay? Arkitekto pa rin sila. Yung mga susunod nun, pagka tinuloy-tuloy pa rin, yun ang hindi na pwede. No, Maa-apply na kasi dito yung doctrine of operative fact. Na kung uh, ikaw ay pumasa noon na valid pa ang uh, kanilang uh, reference, valid pa ang iyong pagkapasa. Pagka hindi na naging valid yon yung mga gumamit lang ng invalid na executive orders, resolutions, laws, yun lang ang magiging invalid ng kanilang uh, pagpasa sa uh, examination. Okay? So, yun. So, let's go now to the uh, practice of profession in section 25. Natapos nyo na yung formation ninyo sa academic institution, nag-graduate na kayo, nag-diversified training na kayo. Ang next nyo doon is you take the license or examination. And not only Uh, you take the licensure examination You pass the licensure examination Kasi may pagkakaiba sa pag-take ng licensure examination Kaysa doon sa pag-pass ng licensure examination Kung gusto mo lang mag-take ng examination Kasi ang one to sawa ang gusto mo no? Kailangan ipasa para isa lang okay? Kasi nakalagay sa section 25 natin As uh, a requisite ng uh, practice of architecture Na dapat na-comply mo yung section 12, article 3 Section 18 Section uh, 17 and uh, Section 20 no? You pass the licensure examination You were issued a certificate of registration And you uh, undertake a, an auto profession Nanumpa ka okay? Ano ba sinasabi ng Section 25? Sabi ng Section 25 No person shall practice architecture in this country Walang pwedeng mag-practice ng architecture sa Pilipinas or engage sa pag-prepare ng architectural plans, specifications, or preliminary data for the erection or alteration of any building located within the, within the boundaries of this country, or use the title architect, or display or use any title kasama dito sa, or use or display any title, kasama dito yung mga title ng architectural designer, na yung mga architectural detailer, bawal under Section 25, kasi uh, yun ay para lang sa mga Registered and licensed architect So kayo, kung nag-apprentice pa lang kayo Hindi kayo pwede magbit-bit ng titulong architectural designer okay? Kahit graduate na kayo uh, Architectural detailer Hindi rin pwede dahil uh, It tantamounts to The uh, practice of architecture okay? Card advertisement no? Hindi nga pwede kayo mag-advertise To solicit uh, projects dahil hindi pa kayo uh, Arkitekto Or other device to indicate such person Practices or offers to practice architecture or is an architect. Ito ngayon ang sinasabi sa last paragraph. Unless mayroon ka ng PRC Certificate of Registration na na-issue ng PRC. Pag wala yun, hindi kayo pwedeng mag-practice o hindi kayo pwedeng gumawa ng lahat na nakalagay under Section 1, uh, Article 1, Section 3, Number 3 and 4 of RA 9266. Ano-ano yung mga yon? Yun yung scope of practice of architecture Doon nakalagay ang mga trabaho na pwede mong gawin Pagka ikaw ay nagiging arkitekto na So hanggat wala kang titulo Hanggat wala kang uh, disensya Hindi mo pwedeng gawin dapat Ang nakalagay sa Article 1, Section 3, Number 3 and 4 Except if you are an employee of an architect or an architectural firm or you are engaged in the student practice rule which is sa atin is diversified uh, training or apprenticeship okay so tatlo lang ang uh, requirements para mag uh, makapag-practice ka ng profession natin okay you pass the licensure exam you took an oath or you take an oath and then you were issued a certificate of registration okay So, ano ba ang mangyayari pagka mag-take ng oath? Manunumpa ka lang, no? And uh, ngayon ang ginagamit nila is Tagalog, no? So, gusto ko lang maintindihan ninyo, ano ba ang sinasabi pagka tayo ay nanunumpa? Ano bang ibig sabihin noon? Ang first paragraph, pagka nanunumpa ka ng uh, panunumpa ng professional pagka kayo ay pumasa later on sa examination, 'yun ay oath of allegiance. Nangangako ka na hindi mo iiwanan ang uh, Pilipinas. Nangangako ka na puportektahan mo yung bansang Pilipinas Okay, so yun yung first paragraph And then yung second paragraph nun is that 
you adhere to the ethical standards and professional practice. Sinasabi mong magiging ethical ka later on pagka nag-practice ka ng uh, profession. Okay? So, yon. Itong auto-professionals is a secret trust, not only a mere ceremony. Kasi sinasabi ng iba, ceremonial lang naman yun eh. Kahit hindi ka umatin dyan, uh, okay lang yan. No. The answer is no. Pagka hindi ka nag-take ng auto-professionals, hindi ka rin pwede mag-practice ng profession. Pagka hindi ka na-issue na ng certificate of registration, hindi ka rin pwede mag-practice ng profession. Kailangan, kumpleto yung dalawang yon. Na kapag take ka ng oath, hindi ka rin na issue ng certificate of registration, wala kang hawak ng certificate of registration, you are not allowed to practice a profession. Kasi that is the requirements provided by law. Na-issue yung certificate of registration, hindi ka rin nakapag-take ng oath, hindi ka pa rin pwede mag-practice ng profession. Kasi, yan ang nire-require na dalawang bagay na dapat importante ng hawak na hawak mo yon okay so yon ang uh, ating auto professionals is a mere ceremony to which all of us have subscribed in a solemn agreement to dedicate ourselves to the pursuit of the profession it is not a mere ceremony or formality for practicing a profession to be forgotten afterwards nor is it a mere words drift and hollow but a secret trust that the professionals must uphold and keep inviolable at all times. Sinabi yan ng Supreme Court no, sa case ni Ting Dumali versus Torres, 427 SCRA 108. Okay, pumasa kayo, naging arkitekto kayo later on, ito yung matatanggap ninyo. No? Bibigyan kayo ng PRCID and bibigyan kayo ng inyong certificate of registration. So, ang certificate of registration, yun yung certification natin na parang diploma no na nakaprint sa parchment paper. So, yan lang naman ang nakalagay dyan. Okay? Pero, sa dalawang yan, ang source of authority natin is the certificate of registration. Ang lisensya natin dyan, ang certificate of registration and not the PRCID. Ang PRCID is only a uh, regular ID. Hindi ko nga mag-gets kung bakit pinipilit yan na uh, nire-renew where in fact under RA 8981 Section 7 Paragraph B. Ayan ay ministerial ang duty ng uh, professional uh, regulation to issue that PRC ID. No? Dapat uh, sa gusto lang ng isang professional uh, na magkaroon ng ID doon lang bibigyan. Hindi dapat yan mandatory. Ang mandatory under the law is the Certificate of uh, registration. Pag binasa natin ang uh, ating uh, certificate of uh, yung, yung ating PRC ID sa likod doon na nakalagay, certification lang. Hindi nakalagay dyan na professional license. No? Hindi, mo, hindi yan katulad ng sa LTO ng mga driver's license na mababasa mo talaga na this is a driver's license. In fact, pag binasa natin ang certification, nakalagay lang dyan that, that ID certifies na hindi na revoke, hindi na suspend Ang ating, cert uh, ang ating certificate of registration or hindi na withdrawn. Sinesertify lang. Okay? So, ang ating uh, authority talaga is nandun sa ating certificate of registration and not on this PRC plastic ID. Okay? So, saan makikita yan? Under Section 7, Paragraph E of uh, PRC Modernization Act of 2000, mababasa natin doon no? na ang uh, duties ng uh, PRC sa isang professional is to admit no the successful examinees yung mga pumasa to the practice of the profession or occupation and uh, cause the entry of their names on its uh, registry book and computerized database issue a certificate of registration slash professional license so malinaw no na ang, ang ating certificate of registration slash professional license yun yung lisensya talaga and yun yung nagbibigay ng authority to practice sa atin and then uh, we go to the uh, red uh, font Kasi ang uh, next na sentence doon is uh, Name, uh, signature, etc. lang naman And sinasabi doon sa red font na yan Which certificate shall be the authority to practice? Malinaw sa RA 1891 na Ang certificate of registration is the authority to practice And at the option of the professional concerned Option lang ng isang professional na, na, na pumasa ministerially issue the professional identification card. So, ang duties ng PRC, pagka hindi dapat nag-request ang isang professional, hindi kailangan na mag-issue ng PRC ID. No, ito nagagamit nga ngayon. No? Sinasabing hindi ka mag- uh, hindi ka pwedeng mag-practice ng iyong profession pagka-expire ang iyong uh, PRC ID. 
No? So hindi ako naniniwala diyan dahil mali na ang sinasabi ng batas. Pero walang uh, kumokontra no dahil uh, kumikita sila rito sa PRC ID. Okay. So ngayon, pumasa kayo sa exam, nabigyan kayo ng PRC ID, certificate of registration. Ano ngayon ang inyong privileges? sa pagpasa ninyo sa board exam later on na magiging arkitekto kayo. Doon na ngayon na you can practice architecture profession within the Philippine territory. Okay? Sa Philippine territory, no? Ang tanong natin, sir, pwede ba kami mag-practice sa West Philippine Sea? The answer is yes. Kasi hindi naman ni renounce ng Pilipinas na hindi na sa atin ang West Philippine Sea, no? Yan ay kung hindi kayo itataboy ng mga Chino. <laughs> ako mag-practice kayo doon sa West Philippine Sea. And then You can now prepare sign and sealed architectural documents prepared by under your uh, direct supervision. Ibig sabihin, kung later on, meron kayong sariling firm, meron na kayong sariling office, ang mga ginagawa ng uh, mga staff ninyo, pwede nyo pirmahan yun dahil project nyo yun. Okay? Pero hindi pwede yung pirmahan nyo ng gawa ng hindi ninyo staff or hindi uh, within your direct supervision, yung mga illegal practitioners na nagpapapirma, bawal yon. Okay? And then you can now collect professional fee to the services under Section 36 kasi hindi pwedeng magkolekta hangga't hindi ka pwede and hindi, hindi ka magiging arkitekto. Okay? And then uh, you can perform now services enumerated under Article 1, Section 3, Number 3 and 4 doon sa scope of practice ng architecture sa uh, pinakauna ng ating uh, article. And then you can avail now the privileges under the uh, IAPOA. Okay. Uh, kaya ko sinasabi na hindi mo pwedeng permahan ang uh, mga gawa ng mga illegal practitioners no kasi mayroon ng uh, commentaries dito ang uh, New York uh, state law no sa signing and sealing ng architectural documents ang sinabi ng uh, ng uh, state law ng uh, New York sinasabi nila na ang practice ng mga certain builders mga developers mga contractors to attempt na ang mga construction document is uh, to be legitimized with this seal and signature of a licensed professional after na ma-prepare nila is illegal. Okay? Such practice is known as rubber stamping and the licensee or the uh, architect is guilty of professional misconduct. So, yun ang komentaris ng New York State Law. May kaakibat yan na provision sa ating Code of Ethics later on. No? Pag naging arkitekto kayo, governed na kayo ng, ng ating uh, Code of Ethics. May kaakibat na provision yan. Sinasabi sa section na uh, 7.9 ng uh, Code of Ethics ng uh, mga architects na the architect shall not affix his or her signature and seal to any plans or professional documents prepared by other persons or entities and not done under his or her direct personal supervision. So, malinaw na hindi tayo pwedeng pumirma lang basta-basta. No? Kasi liability ang nakataya dyan once you sign and seal architectural documents prepared by a non-registered person. Okay? So, alam nyo na yung privilege ninyo later on, pagbiging arkitekto kayo, ano naman ngayon ang characteristics ng practice of architecture? So, ang characteristics naman sa practice ng architecture is that it is only a privilege, no? not a natural right or a constitutional right. So, hindi mo piling ipilit sa gobyerno. No? Na bigyan mo ako ng authority, bigyan mo ako ng ganitong privilegio dahil privilegio lang ito and kailangan mong pumasa muna para mabigyan ka ng uh, privilegio sa pag-practice ng profession. So, hindi mo pwedeng i-demand sa gobyerno. And then, uh, practice of architecture is a highly personal privilege. No? Kasi nga, ang uh, pwede lang mag-practice dito is the license uh, professionals. And then, uh, it limits only to the citizens of good moral character. Pagka ikaw later on is na uh, prove ng court that uh, you are lack of good moral character, uh, nagkadoon ng deceit, no? And then, uh, hindi ka pwedeng mag-practice, pwede kang tanggalan ng lisensya. And then, uh, practice of architecture is only for those persons with special educational qualifications. Sa mga nag-aral lang, pagka hindi ka nag-aral ng architecture, hindi pwede mag-practice. No? Kung uh, hanggang uh, drafting technology ka lang, hindi ka pwede mag-practice ng uh, scope of practice of architecture kasi prohibited ka under the law. And then, uh, well, practice of architecture is duly ascertained and certified through licensure examination and then uh, practice of architecture is not a trade or business no but a uh, profession or occupation hindi ito uh, negosyo uh, that is why we are more on uh, service okay and then 
uh, it cannot be the subject of succession no pag namatay ka later on sasabihin mo ang magmamana ng aking profession bilang isang arkitekto ay ang bunsong anak hindi pwede no kasi it is regulated by the state ang uh, ating lisensya pag namatay tayo uh, automatic will be terminated and then cannot be bartered or leased no wala kang bigas ngayon no dahil wala kang project yung yung uh, certificate of registration iba bartered mo muna not allowed no hindi pwede okay and then uh, can be taken away by the government anytime subject to the requirement of due process pwedeng tanggalin ng gobyerno as long na merong due process papasagutin ka muna kung bakit ka tatanggalan ng bakit hindi ka tatanggalan ng lisensya okay and practice of architecture is in noble uh, profession okay so yun yung privilege natin yun yung ating uh, characteristics sa practice Sino naman ngayon ang hindi pwede mag-practice ng architecture? Hindi pwede mag-practice ng profession natin ang mga hindi rehistrado na arkitekto sa PRC. So pag wala ka doon sa PRC, no, graduate ka pa lang, hindi ka pwedeng mag-practice ng architecture. Bawal. Okay? Uh, violation 'yan ng uh, Architecture Act of 2004 or RA 9266. Foreign architects who are not a holder of a special temporary permit, bawal din mag-practice ng uh, profession. No, pag pumasok yung mga foreigners dito, kailangan mayroong uh, special temporary permit muna from the PRC for them to be allowed to practice architecture profession. And then uh, those registered and licensed architect, pero yung registration nila ay na-revoke, no? ng uh, PRC no dahil nakakommit sila ng uh, offenses, crimes. So bawal din sila mag-practice ng profession. And uh, those registered and licensed architects whose registration are being suspended, no, hindi rin pwedeng mag-practice ng profession. And yung mga dead architects, no, syempre patay na hindi na pwedeng mag-practice yan, no. Marami pa mga patay ng arkitekto, no, pag uh, nakikita mo sa office o building office, bigla may pumasok na nakapirma siya. Ano yun? Pwede bang pumirma yung mga ghost architects? So, bawal na yun. No? Minsan ginagamit ng iba. So, yun pala nagpagawa ng lisensya dun sa recto. Iba yung pangalan. Okay? So, yun. Uh, you know, mas magandang uh, later on kung kayo nakakapag-commit ng offense. Alam nyo, mas maganda yung penalty ng uh, revocation compare sa penalty ng suspension. No? Kasi sa batas natin, pag uh, na-revoke ang iyong license, automatic mayroong reinstatement after 2 years, no? So magpa-file ka lang ng petition na ibalik yung lisensya mo after 2 years, nagbago ka na, no? Uh, after mo makagawa ng kasalanan, ay eh, nag-aral ka na ng theology, naging religious ka na, so ibalik mo na yung lisensya ko, no? Pero pagka suspension, ang mahirap kasi doon, nakalagay doon sa suspension na limbawa is sa suspended until further notice. Mahaba-haba yon, no? Kahit 5 uh, years, 10 years, no? Baka nagpalit lang ng ng uh, members of the board, baka hindi pa naibalik yung lisensya mo. So mas maganda yung uh, revocation, yung na-revoke para after 2 years, pwedeng i-reinstate. Pagka suspension, nako, uh, depende yan sa nakaupong uh, chairman and the members of the board kung ibabalik yung lisensya mo or hindi. Okay? And then uh, well, malinaw yan sa section 34 and uh, section 36 that uh, non-registered person, yung mga hindi pa arkitekto, katulad nyo, pag nag-graduate kayo, hindi pa kayo lisensya, uh, hindi pa kayo lisensyado, under section 34, hindi kayo pwedeng mag-prepare uh, ng uh, equivalent service with an architect. And under section 36, hindi rin kayo pwedeng maningil ng uh, services dahil hindi kayo arkitekto. Okay? And then, uh, we all or... We all or we are all governed by our code of ethics once we become an architect later on no and uh, hindi tayo pwedeng manulot ng mga na na i uh, kontrata na sa ibang uh, arkitekto no hindi din natin pwedeng i-critic uh, maliciously ang ating uh, kapwa arkitekto no hindi pwedeng sasabihin mo ang pangit ng design niya dapat sa akin ka nagpa-design hindi pwede yon kasi governed na tayo ng ating code of ethics we have to act professionally no so yon governed na tayo ng ating code of ethics and then uh, lahat ng iyan no pag uh, nakumit mo ng pag na, kapag commit ka ng offenses uh, that uh, belongs to the grounds for the revocation of license lahat ng iyan ay matatanggal sa iyo no under section uh, 23 halimbawa nag-sign and seal ka ng uh, gawa ng mga non-registered persons pwede ka matanggalan ng lisensya uh, false impersonation pwede kang tanggalan ng lisensya aiding or abetting a non-registered registered persons in the practice of the profession yung uh, pag pag sign and seal that is considered as aiding or abetting a non-registered persons in the practice of the profession pwede kang tanggalan ng lisensya 
uh, naisolicit ka ng project na wala kang kontrata mo ng pinermahan, pwede kang tanggalan ng lisensya pag nagreklamo sa iyo. And uh, you violate uh, any of the provisions of RA 92.66. Then all of that are penalized under Section 29 and Section 30 under Penal Clause ng ating RA 92.66. 66. Okay, so thank you and uh, hope that uh, you learned something no, on uh, this uh, short lecture on uh, RA 92-66. Right. Uh, thank you so much for that mindful, uh, uh, mindful amount of lectures that you have uh, provided as maestro. Uh, for me, my major takeaway from your lecture would be there's a difference between or difference of learning towards uh, passing the licensure and uh, licensure exam and knowing how to practice the architecture program itself. No. So um, how about you, Kuya Pandong or Kuya PJ? What is your major takeaway from our guest speaker's uh, lecture for today? Uh, so, ako, pinaprocess ko pa lang lahat ng napakadaming um, ideas na naibigay ni Maestra, no? But, uh, uh, I think, um, for me, studying architecture is not is not that easy. So, kapag inagawan tayo ng, ng, ng karapatan, we have to fight for it. And we must know this law because this uh, law can protect us, will protect us in the future, ano? So, ayun po. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Right. Uh, before we proceed, um, let's take a Zoom fee. So, uh, I would be, or I'll be needing to ask you to open up your cameras so that we'll be able to have a Zoom fee for our uh, documentation purposes and also para alam natin na active pa kayo dyan. Right, just a moment. So I will be asking you to smile. I'm not sure which slide are you in, but I have approximately a total of three slides right here. So just a moment. Uh, yeah, Lang, first slide. And going to second slide, smile. One, two, three, smile. Right. And Oh, nadagdagan yung slide. Wait lang. So, may lalit kayo. And there. Right. Right. Thank you so much. Yan. Uh, since nakapag-take na tayo ng Zoom fee, uh, let's go ahead and uh, continue with the question and answer portion. Um... Uh, Maestro, we have prepared some uh, questions that was um, around uh, the Zoom right here and from our FB Live. And uh, Kuya PJ, uh, you can take the floor now. All right. So can you see my screen, guys? Yes. Uh, so, Maestro, here is our first uh, question. Ano? Uh, what advice you can give to the students who are practicing architecture amidst this rising conflict? So, there are students po kasi na, na well, practicing architecture, like uh, they are accepting um, projects na, na, you know, they are not allowed to uh, practice. Okay. Uh, well, naiintindihan naman natin dahil uh, karamihan is gusto rin kumita. No? Uh, lalo na uh, halimbawa, nanggaling sila sa uh, pamilya na uh, medyo hindi naman maganda uh, or hindi naman mayayaman na pamilya and uh, well, yung iba dyan is sa mga breadwinner. No? But uh, you know, my advice is uh, it is better for you to uh, ask your professors no? to employ with them. No? Halimbawa, baka may mga projects sila at uh, pwede silang magpa-drop sa iyo ng mga projects nila no? to make it uh, lawful no? dahil uh, sila, sarili na ng project yon at uh, you are under with their direct uh, supervision. Kasi kung uh, ikaw ay uh, nag-practice ka personally and uh, later on, may mga ibang uh, architects na napansin ka 
and uh, nag-file sila ng petition to bar you to take the, the licensure examination. Eh, later on, mauuwi sa wala yung, yung uh, pinag-aralan. No? Sayang lang yung pagiging uh, uh, graduate mo, alimbawa ng architecture, or you are now within your fourth year, kung uh, later on, is uh, ibabar ka lang naman to take the licensure examination for uh, committing an offense which is uh, illegal practice of the architecture profession. Alright. So, sana nakapulot tayo ng, ng learning sa sinabi ni Maestro. No? So, let's go to our second question. Uh, are the architects abroad allowed to sign and seal architectural, architectural documents here in the Philippines since they are violating their oath, oath of allegiance? Uh, okay. Uh, well, we have to define first the violation of the auto allegiance. No, kasi kung hindi mo naman renounce, no, hindi mo narenounce yung yung auto allegiance, kahit uh, nagtrabaho uh, ka abroad. Ibig sabihin hindi yon. Uh, hindi ibig sabihin nagtrabaho ka abroad. Is you renounce your auto allegiance? No, kasi marami na mga uh, mga OFW na nagtatrabaho lang ng na nandun sa abroad na trabaho lang. Ang uh, pag-renounce ng auto allegiance kasi is uh, example, uh, nagkaroon ka na ng uh, other citizenship or foreign citizenship abroad. Then uh, that the uh, renunciation of your oath of allegiance. Pero being an OFW for example, nasa Dubai ka, sa Saudi Arabia ka, that is not considered a renunciation of your oath of allegiance. So, nagkataon lang na doon yung yung employment. <clears throat> but the question is uh, allowed ba ang kanilang uh, sign and seal sa architectural documents? here in the Philippines. Generally the answer is no. No, kasi una una, uh, you sign and seal abroad. Wala ka sa iyong uh, uh, territorial jurisdiction and ibig sabihin your authority uh, being an architect uh, walang full force and uh, effect. No, kasi ang sinasabi nga sa sa ating batas is you are allowed to practice within the boundaries of Philippine territory. Now, they will argue no, na sasabihin nila, eh, ang project sa Pilipinas naman, nag-sign and seal lang naman ako dito sa <coughs> uh, abroad. Okay? So, take note that uh, ang uh, bagong building permit ngayon, kung ikaw ay mag-sign and seal ng building permit, is may notary public din. No, may notaryo ang bagong building permit application. So, paano ka nag-appear sa notary public pag ikaw ay nasa abroad? Diba? And uh, alibawa, ang pinirmahan mo is uh, in charge of in, including in charge of supervision. How are you going to supervise the work if you are abroad? No? So, yun yung mga mga technicalities doon na kailangan din na uh, tingnan. Hindi dahil kasi arkitekto tayo at nasa ibang bansa tayo at may magpapagawa sa atin ng uh, ng design is uh, mag-sign and seal tayo na nandun tayo sa abroad is okay lang. No? But ang tanong doon is how are you able to comply with the requirements provided by law? Uh, so, yun ang uh, nakikita ko dyan. Alright, thank you sir. So, next question. Under our diversified uh, training, sir, is it counted if you have a pen to practice overseas? Well, ngayon kasi is uh, allowed nga yung, ano, allowed nga yung uh, diversified training abroad. No? So, pwedeng i-count yun. Pero yung sinasabi ko kanina is uh, pwedeng debatable. No? If somebody will uh, file a uh, a petition in court to declare that uh, resolution no, and the uh, executive order by uh, Madam uh, Arroyo uh, before uh, magkakaroon ng problema no? but uh, for now that is uh, valid kasi wala namang declaration ng naliti of that uh, executive order and the uh, board resolution sa, ng, ng PRC noong 2017 that uh, the uh, diversified training abroad uh, is allowed Sir uh, fourth question, how can we, in a way, stop other professions to sign and seal architectural documents if their law says that they can actually sign and seal one? Okay, ang question is, how can we stop other professions to sign and seal architectural documents if their law says they can actually sign and seal? Okay. Uh, alam nyo sa totoo lang, other professions, no, yung mga civil engineers, they are not really... Uh, competent to prepare architectural documents. 
Okay? Kaya lang naman uh, nakaka-perma ng uh, architectural documents sa mga yan dahil maraming architecture graduate, maraming architecture students na nagiging prostitute sa profession natin. No? Maraming architecture students na ginagamit ng mga ibang professionals like engineers. No? Maraming mga students na ang mga uh, employment nila is sa mga civil engineers. So, nagagamit yung skills ng uh, architecture doon sa mga civil engineers. Pero kung ang mga students like you, for example, hindi kayo uh, kukuha ng uh, mga drafting works, hindi kayo kukuha ng uh, employment sa mga civil engineers, I don't uh, think na kaya nila mag-prepare. No? In fact, uh, may meron akong isang uh, project na even structural design, hindi nga kayang i-draft ng uh, isang civil engineer. No? How much more architectural na mas marami yung architectural detailing. No? So, nagtakataon lang talaga that uh, there were students, there were graduates of architecture that uh, becomes a prostitute of our profession. So, I guess, wag tayong maging prostitute, guys. Okay, let's proceed. How can we strengthen the rule of law of architectural permit to be mandated in LGUs po? Okay. Uh, una, uh, well, we have our chapters. We have uh, three chapters in uh, Baguio City. No? And... Uh, I was uh, able to attend uh, one of their meetings no, down sa Office of the Building Officials and uh, I think one uh, in the presence of the uh, counselor who is an architect at the same time. No? And uh, to, to strengthen is that uh, we have to fight for it. No? Kasi kung magiging uh, luck din tayo sa pag-fight uh, for that uh, implementation, uh, mas lalo lang din tayo madi-defeat ng uh, other professionals. No? So, kailan hindi din natin pababayaan and babantayan natin. And uh, we have to uh, take uh, precautions lagi. No? Babantayan natin palagi ang uh, mga ganong uh, senaryo. And uh, if, if the, they are accepting uh, the, the design and seal of other professionals. So why not also implementing uh, the uh, the architectural permit or the ancillary permit to make it uh, level to both professions? So next, uh, is it possible to take the board exam even if the student failed to undergo with his or her diversified training but his but had his or her masteral degree po? Well, masteral degree considered as one-year diversified training. So, kung ang yung uh, diversified uh, training, for example, hindi umabot ng uh, two years, no? but uh, it counts also up to one year plus your master's degree. That is considered as uh, completion of the diversified training. So, sir, pwedeng, pwede ba na dalawang masteral degree na lang para... Halimbawa, ayaw ko kasing mag-apprenticeship, mag sir. Eh, parang ganun lang po. Well, the law does not provide of, uh, the number of uh, master's degree. But the law provides that uh, a master's degree is only equivalent to one-year diversified training. So, in my uh, view, kahit ilang, diversify, kahit ilang uh, uh, master's degree pa ang kukunin mo, that is only counted as one-year diversified training. Yes, sir. So... Maybe this is the our last. I know someone who was supposed to take thesis this uh, school year but had to migrate to Canada due to family matters. Do you know perhaps in the Philippines and Canada, if the Philippines and Canada have a reciprocity agreement for her to study, uh, take apprenticeship and practice architecture there? Well, I am not uh, aware no, kung mayroon talagang... Uh reciprocity agreement yung Canada sa Pilipinas no but uh, since na hindi pa siya nakapagtapos i, I think uh, what uh, she need to do is uh, really a transfer of uh, academic uh, institution no hindi naman reciprocity siguro ang kailangan dahil uh, hindi siya hindi lang siya nakapagtapos dito sa Pilipinas but nakapag-start siya ng kanyang uh, academic formation no so i think ang uh, kailangan niyang gawin is that uh, that is a transfer of uh, ano talaga transfer of uh, academic uh, 
learning doon sa uh, Canada. But uh, I doubt if we have the same uh, descriptive title no sa ating mga subjects doon sa kanila. Baka kasi mamaya wala ring uh, kapareho at hindi rin magcredit lahat and mag-uumpisa rin siya doon sa simula. Okay, thank you sir for uh, uh, answering those uh, questions. May I call on our president po. Take it away. Right. Uh, thank you so much for uh, again for answering that question, Maestro. So uh, before we proceed, I would like to uh, thank you or have a shout out with the following universities that have joined us today: uh, University of Nueva Caceres, uh, University of San Agustin, and University of Immaculate Conception. So uh, with those th three universities, do you have any additional questions with the Maestros? Ah, uh, pwede niyo i-open yung ma yung mic niyo kung may questions kayo na i-add sa uh, mga questions na natanong na kanina. So there is a question here from Ryan. Mm -hmm. uh, Maestro, what is the ASEAN architect? Okay. Uh, itong ASEAN architect is that uh, if you are registered as uh, ASEAN uh, architect uh, you are allowed later on uh, to practice within the ASEAN countries no, na open sa itong uh, ASEAN uh, program. Okay? And uh, ito ay uh, dahil din sa requirements na sinasabi natin APEC. No? Merong APEC architect, merong ASEAN architect. Ang uh, question na naman dito is that uh, are you capable to get clients from the ASEAN countries? No? E, gusto mo nga maging ASEAN architect? Eh, kung wala ka namang capability to travel with ASEAN countries, wala ka namang capability to market in uh, ASEAN countries, and wala ka namang capability later on to face challenges, to face uh, disputes with ASEAN countries, what will happen? No, kasi ang, ang, ako ang point ko is, uh, it is good enough for you to have that title, no, ASEAN architect. Uh, the point is, kailangan mo ba talaga? No, kasi may simply may registration, no, may renewals. Eh kailangan mo ba talaga para magkaroon ng uh, title na ASEAN architect kung hindi ka naman uh, nakakapag-practice within ASEAN uh, countries, no? And uh, you don't have all the uh, capability technically and uh, financially. No? So that's the question there. Right. Uh, so another question was raised, sir. Uh, while undergoing a diversified training, is it possible to change your mentor? Can you keep the hours done and be recorded? Ah uh, yes. Okay. Ito yung mga misconception uh, ng mga nag-diversified training. Ang uh, understanding kasi nila, once you enter into one mentor, doon mo natatapusin yung yung two years diversified training. The answer is no. Okay? Pwede kang maglipat-lipat ng mentor. Example, uh, six months ka lang ngayon sa mentor na to sa architectural uh, designing. Okay? And then, mayroong isang architect, for example, na yung practice niya is uh, project management and uh, construction management. Pwede kang lumipat doon for the field of construction and project management and you complete the uh, diversified training on uh, project management and construction management. And the uh, example, uh, meron namang isang architect na meron siyang specialty niya is uh, architectural interiors, interiors. Pwede ka namang lumipat doon and you will get another points for your architectural interiors. And lahat sila ay uh, pipirma doon sa mga logbook na nag-diversified training ka sa kanila. Hindi necessary that you are going to stay with one mentor kasi hindi sa lahat ng oras ang iyong mentor or yung isang architect is makover niya for the whole two years yung lahat ng field of practice na yan. Okay? And uh, mayroon mga ibang architect na specialty nila yung uh, project and construction management, specialty nila yung architectural interiors, specialty nila yung quantity surveying. No? So, for a good training, you go with that uh, specialized skills ng mga other architects. Mas, mas maganda yon. Right. Uh, thank you so much for that response, sir. So, um, is there any other questions? Uh, because uh, if wala na kayong may raise na question, ika close na natin yung Q and A. Okay, there is another one, sir. 
Mm. How long should we uh, should you last on one mentor? Well, uh, sa ngayon kasi walang uh, policy ang uh, board na uh, inilabas. Pero during the time of uh, architect Cesar Cancela, uh, I think way back uh, 80s, no? During the time of architect Cesar Cancela as the chairman of the board of architecture, merong nilabas si architect uh, Cancela na board resolution. And ang nakalagay doon sa kanyang uh, board resolution, ito ay nawawala na ngayon, no? masyadong hindi na uh, nagagawa no? or na-override na. Sa time ni architect Cesar Cancela, meron siyang... Uh, board resolution instructing all architects in the country that all architects should mentor uh, one uh, students for uh, that uh, one year period and yung uh, minimum na mentorship na sinasabi ni architect Cesar Cancela doon is uh, four months during that time na siya yung chairman of the board of architecture pero yung resolution na yun is uh, hindi yun uh, nakalagay sa bagong uh, resolution No, so, ibig sabihin, kung uh, one month ka lang nag-stay sa iyong uh, mentor pagpasok mo and uh, you change mentor, one month lang din ang pipermahan ng mentor mo sa iyo. Okay? So, uh, yan lang. Kasi wala, wala namang uh, policies na nilabas yung uh, Board of Architecture regarding that matter. Alright. Uh... Um, since uh, we're not uh, receiving any response or any questions uh, as for now, uh, let's go ahead and move forward. So uh, moving forward, sir, uh, we will be presenting you a certificate of appreciation appreciation right here. Uh, it says right here, uh, UAPSA, UB ARCS, and UAP Summer Capital, Capital would like to present this certificate of appreciation to architect Alfredo A. Uh, Fernandez for sharing his invaluable knowledge as a guest speaker during the webinar entitled Pagsibol, a webinar on RA9266, the Architecture Act of 2004. Uh, given this 16th of October 2020, uh, signed by architect John Glenn L. Abella, um, the chapter president of uh, UAP Summer Capital, uh, Joel R. Malekdan Jr., the chapter president of UAPSA UB Arcs, and architect Tim Paul Villanueva, Villanueva the uh, current chapter uh, advisor of uh, UAPSA UB Arcs. So this will be sent over to your um, email by um, Kuya PJ, and uh, we will be um, getting in touch with you, sir. Okay? Okay, so thank you very much, guys, now for that uh, invitation no, na nakasama ko ngayong, ngayong hapon yung... Uh, mga students and uh, architects ng uh, ng uh, Baguio no and uh, yung nag-join din sa atin yung uh, University of uh, San Agustin and uh, ano yun ano yung isang school no so uh, Caceres, sir and Immaculate Conception okay yon so yung mga nag-join din sa ating uh, webinar ngayon uh, thank you rin sa sa inyo sa pakikinig and uh, I'm wishing you all na uh, ma makapasa kayong lahat no and uh, sana ma-meet ma ko kayo in uh, person later on and uh, when you become an architect uh, pag nakasalubong niya ako just uh, approach me no kasi hindi ko kayo kilalang lahat no and uh, pag uh, later on nagkita-kita tayo just approach me and uh, we will have uh, take uh, a cup of coffee Right. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Dean, sir, for um, being able to come with our webinar with just a short notice from our uh, mother chapter uh, chapter advisor. And uh, uh, in behalf of UAPSA UB Arcs, as president of the Univ uh, University of Baguio, uh, UAPSA UB Arcs, uh, we are humbly um, welcoming you every time you want to uh, have a, a lecture with our university. Okay, thank you very much no. And uh, sa mga hindi pa nakapag-subscribe sa aking channel no, huwag kalimutan mag-subscribe na sa aking uh, channel at uh, marami rin tayong mga lectures na nakalagay doon. And uh, sa mga hindi pa nakabili ng aking uh, libro no, yung uh, RA 9266 uh, Q&A with notes and uh, cases, uh, pwedeng uh, umorder directly sa akin, pwedeng bumili sa Central Bookstore. Uh, pwedeng uh, mag-request uh, kay uh, architect uh, Leia para siya mag-coordinate sa akin 
And uh, sa mga schools na nasa Baguio and the other schools, uh, I will be giving you 10% uh, discount when you purchase the book.